All right. Good morning, everybody, and happy New Year. It's good to see everybody back. Good to be back. You know, a, few, a lot of folks watching on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to put the link in to the Zoom meeting in case you want to come into the Zoom meeting one of these times soon. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, this is Make Hogue Money. This is the CFTC disclaimer. Everything we do here is for educational purposes only. There is substantial risk in trading futures. It's really not for every investor. You should only be using risk capital. Risk capital, to me, is money that you can afford to lose. We're not suggesting anybody buy or sell anything that we're doing here or at any time. We're, of course, making no representation that this is going to make money or lose money. Of course, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Hypothetical or simulated performance results does have certain limitations. This is a live account. But trading on SIM just makes the decision-making easier. There's no accountability, no risk, no consequence, no accountability again. Trading on a real account makes things a little bit more difficult. Rules for make Oak money. Kindness and respect are expected above everything. There's always differences of opinion and different ways to look at markets. What's what makes them so good? We have a couple of people enabled to talk this morning, and we're all going to be involved in the decision making. And of course, context of your decision or of your trade idea is going to be helpful. You, if you are speaking, will be able to share your charts should you choose to. We're going to use the chat rooms to discuss trades. We're going to focus on the mini S&Ps for, for, the, for the time being. We're not going to trade just to trade. We're not taking losing trades, which is, of course, a joke. We know that losses are a part of trading. We have to accept them and move on. And, of course, feedback is always vital for the continuation and success of Make Hogue Money and pretty much everything we do here. If you're, on, if you're on the YouTube channel, you won't be able to vote. You will be able to vote on trades in the Zoom meeting. And um, we'll get started here. Let's take a look at the platform where we should all be relatively aware of what the market is doing and has done. This is the micros here. We have the late spike from Friday. We're opening above the late spike. We know that we have a gap. From Friday's activity here in the S&Ps, this is the 30-minute chart, just for context. Here's the range on Friday. Here's the late spike that occurred. And we're opening with a gap and above a late spike. First question. We're opening out of range and out of balance from Friday's activity. We have no real overnight inventory with which to speak of. We're th the nuance is with the gap open higher and the open above the, the late spike indicates potential acceptance of higher pricing. Do we want to take the opening range trade? How do I not have any create? Okay, hang on a second here. Hang on. I forgot this is a new... New link, so I don't have any polls set up yet. So let's just use the chat room today and say, you know, are we going to take the opening range trade or not? The opening range trade is looking at the first minute from 8.30 to 8.31 in the S&Ps and then taking a trade when it breaks out above that first minute to the long side or taking a breakout trade to the downside short if the market looks lower outside that first minute. Do we want to take it? Zach Knight, ZK, long at 38.93 for six to nine points, waiting for second or third pullback. 38.93, 38.93. Long if it opens lower. Opening range trade, yes. First day of the year, only take opening range trade with your money. <laughs> opening range trade, yes, yes. Take it, Alejandro, Rob, yes. Melanie, yes. 
Melanie, I got an email from you, and, and I didn't wasn't didn't check emails till too late, I'm afraid. But I'll answer you when I get to get the chance. So Spencer says the market is attempting to auction higher, but might struggle above thirty nine hundred. All right. Um, I know I got Randolph here. I'm gonna let Randolph speak here. I'm going to promote you to panelist, Randolph. Anybody else that wants to speak, let me know. So we're looking, we're kind of focusing here, it seems like, on the overnight high, which is 3,900. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Not bad. How are you? Doing well, doing well. What's going on? Finally, right? Hang on a second here. Uh, Four minutes. Say something. Oh, it was nice. Yeah, it was nice. How about yours? Same old, same as before. Yeah? <laughs> Nothing changed, huh? <laughs> I got your your uh, text. I was I was, you know, I was excited. I'm thinking, well, he's he's looking for it. That's a good thing. Yeah. What is which one is VWAP? VWAP is right here, thirty eight seventy nine. Okay. Yes, this is the first and second standard deviations. It's first standard deviation. It is, I can, it's 3892.50 approximately. I can, I can post them over here, but it just looks. Yeah, there's a whole moving averages. Here, I can show you those here. Do a day by day frame. Well, these are the whole moving averages. This is a nine session, this is a 13 session. So I tend to use them as short time frame changes of momentum. We've had the nine now across over the 13. We're above I swing, VWAP. I swing, I swing trade, so I use a 20 and a 200. Right. Yeah, that's longer time frame. That's, you're going to see that on my like daily charts, although not this one apparently. But this is the 20 exponential on the daily. Up against that thirty nine hundred high from the overnight. Okay, we were about one minute from the open. Where does the dollars up and gold and silver are up to this? I I was saying that in the forecast. How does that work, huh? Yeah, I saw that. So this is the one minute chart. Hang on. So it should be showing me the opening range. Here it goes. So here we go. And we're off. Seventy six. We're at exactly five points in the opening range now. So you sold it at thirty nine. No, we don't. No, we don't do anything yet. We gotta wait for the opening range to establish itself and then break out one side or the other. We've got about fifteen seconds left. So 
So we go 81.75. I think we're just taking out the low here. Hang on. Shoot. So we did take out the low of the opening range. So I'm just going to sell one and see what happens here. How many tip opening range are there? Uh, so just around five or six points. Five, about five points. Here we can check it out here. Yep, five points exactly. So if we were quick, we would have had a stop and we would have had a little bit better trade location by about a point. But right now we're short 75 quarter. And we've got a stop in above the opening range. I want to move that just a few ticks above it. Here's the profile. That's not necessarily populating correctly. There's the profile. Here's our late spike. I don't like the short because I think the market is is kind of telling us it's accepting higher pricing. You need to have patience. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go the other direction if we take out the high of the opening range. That 3900 area is So we got our hull saying long. We're above with V. We're above VWAP saying long. We took out the low of the opening range. That didn't work. We just got stopped out and got long. My goodness. I think we're probably headed for a test of the overnight high up here. That's that thirty nine hundred. You know, we're getting some legs. So looking at 3,900 or 3,907, the overnight high. Uh, 76. Spencer agreeing. He says it should go check that 3900 level now. Don't have very good trade location. Let's see what we got going on here. Trading research says it looks like buying around VWAP might be a high odds play. That's I got our stop just the other side of VWAP now. Now we got it going here. Well, what do you think, Randolph? Well, I would have waited for what? Sell it against the 3900. 
Well, we'll see if we get the chance, huh? Spence has his stop now at break even. <clears throat> What's your trade location, Spencer? Got in a little lower. Okay, good. So S and B was down twenty percent for twenty twenty two. Yeah, I can tell that by looking at my four hundred one k. I know, right? Yeah. Me either, Spence. You, you flipped, huh, General? Yeah. <clears throat> I did. I flipped. Not the best trade location, of course, but just the fact that we opened above the late spike is acceptance of higher pricing. The gap, the lack of gap close is acceptance of higher pricing. I watched, I watched uh, another pre-market <clears throat> before you came out. Mm -hmm. He's saying, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't get bullish on until it takes up that 39 10 area, you know, breaks out the highs. The overnight high? In other words, it's got to prove itself. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel that. I just, I always hear Jim Dalton saying, you know, if you wait for confirmation, you're going to lose the best trade location. Which, which we don't have great trade locations so far in this session. <clears throat> Depends if you're scalping it or if you're swing trading it. Or... ZK, yeah, you're, uh, they're, I'm sure, still working on getting your account. It should, you should be getting it soon. What's your, what's your profit target? Um, 3,900. Put it a couple ticks below it. Oh, I always do that. 38.75. All right, Mr. Valentine has set the price. Yeah, you're going to have cells waiting for you up there. Up against that first standard deviation of VWAP right here. Try to make that bigger so everybody can see. There we go. Huh. Trading research. Been trying to take time off. I made chocolate zucchini bread yesterday. With baking, everything's got to be perfect measurements. Used real vanilla, organic zucchini, good dark chocolate, precise measurements, but somehow I bumped the knob on the oven up to about 15 to 25 degrees. Let's just say it's kind of crunchy on the outside. I like that. 
I, w I wouldn't be complaining about some crunchy uh, chocolate zucchini bread. And we are out. What, who did? Scrabby. Oh, no. Scrabble. We just got our profit target while you were saying that. It's going it's to get you. Come on. It's, uh, we're already out. We got it already. It was a good trade. Nice trade. Yeah. You had a hunter lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those days are long gone. All right, so here we are, 3,900, the magic number. Have I ever traded a 100 lot? Not on purpose. Right? A hundred lot in the S&Ps and the big S&Ps. It's 500 minis. Spencer, I know I'm thinking the same thing. Right? What's our risk? Probably up over the highs. Over the high? Do we take it? Vote. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes, no, no. No. I got five, two yeses and then three no's. Four no's. They don't like it. The no's are long. Just kidding. The what? I wonder, I'm just going to want to see if we get a real test of the overnight high. So you didn't sell it? Nope. We have one, two, everybody's saying no. See, that's what I'm thinking, James. Is wait till we get closer to the overnight high. This has this is one of those, James, where it's got me thinking, if I'm thinking it, others are thinking it. Where are their stops going to be? Right above the overnight high. I don't think we'll see it. You don't think we're going to get there? We, you want to bet? We could, use, we could do the usual amount. What's that? We could bet, you and me, the usual amount. Dollar. So Shit. Should have flipped. Yep. Well, that we know nice we know that day. now, and it's a long day. So what happened to Scrabby? Sorry, you're up for the day. Scrabble is his, uh, Scrabble is uh, my brother Randolph's dog. By the way, what happened to Scrabble? She's almost old enough to drink. So what happened? Was she being chased by a coyote or something? Are you with me? What happened to Scrabble? Well, that's happened to that's that's happened to me too. <laughs> you know, carry me up and down stairs. No, I leave that to Donna. <laughs> so Backer Sultan has started buying again from around thirty-eight eighty. 
that puts us right back down here near we near that VWAP level. What do we think? Do we like it? Yes, no. No. Mel says no. Yeah, if you get another chance, I'd let them have one. You know, at thirty-nine, eighty-five, or nine. I'm sorry, ninety-five plus where you, where you got out. Where you're short. Get out of the long. You mean? Are we looking for a long around 3860, 3850? That's the late spike. I like that. We may not see it in Make Hogue Money, but it's certainly something that's on my radar, Vince. Thirty-eight seventy-six to the overnight low. Thirty-eight seventy-seven fifty is about about the VWAP. Don't even think about it. Ooh. I think you could probably take a short and buy it at the end, close of the day. Really? I'm bearish. Can you tell? I guess. Thirty-eight seventy-two fifty. Oh my God! I know. Never seen that before. The whole world is praying about that. So I'm with Vince. I mean, I believe that we could come all the way back down to this 38, 55, 50 to 60 area and and find support there. Look at this. Yeah, if it gets up near BWAP, I don't have one. Where's our stop? All right, I put an order in to short us at 75 even. I missed that. What'd you do? All I did was put in an order to short at 75. Oh. I got a six, six point stop on it. Takes us well back above VWAP. Okay. Do we like it? If you're not, yeah. <laughs> Zach is saying, if he was trading today, he would have been done on those two trades. The long and then the short at the high. Yeah. Zach, I don't know where you are. Maybe you go to the beach or play golf or skiing or snowmobiling or something. Spence, nice job. Yeah, we're short. Backer Sultan. I'm with you, Backer. 
on the hourly, higher highs, higher lows. Only looking for longs. Bears look good. Yeah. Packers do. I know. You can't give them a chance, man. Well, Minnesota gave them a lot of points. Yep. Zach's in Colorado. Go skiing. I had both my kids were skiing this weekend. Yeah, that's right. He was up at Cascade. How did he like it? Oh, I guess they had a blast. He loved it. Yeah, only a little blood, so it wasn't a big deal. But uh, Sarah was up at Granite, Granite Peak, Where? Granite Peak, Granite Mountain, up by Wausau. Yesterday. Didn't even know she was going. Michael's saying he's had three three trades on longs, all good. Profile still bullish. See what B period does. I'm going to shorten our stop up a little bit to the other side of this low volume node. Shit, that gold EFT is up four and a quarter percent. Where you take where are you gonna where are you gonna reel this in at? The gap close. You got five of them now. Sixty three. Stop down to break even. We're flat. Just a little bit. Yeah. We just we just took the profit at the gap close. Nice. You're rocking it today. Yeah, well, even a blind squirrel finds an acorn once in a while, huh? <laughs> Vince says, nice trade, Rick. Look at that. Almost like we knew what the hell we were doing. Hey, John, if it gets back up there, reload. You like that 75 again, huh? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, 85, wherever it was. Well, the VWAP is 75, 76 yeah. right now. Need a bigger screen. I know, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to make sure everybody can see everything. Well, it's a long day. I need to go make another cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I got my my cup of coffee here. I need to I need a refill. Maybe I teach Lacey how to go get me another cup of coffee. Haven't been able to teach her how to go get me a beer yet. Too humble. Can we get trade management in group coaching? Of course. Thank you very much, Too Humble, Greg. Missed everybody, too. Feels good to be sitting back down and, believe it or not, taking risk. <laughs> there here we go. Here we go. Vince, we're going to get close to our base of our late spike here.
Joe, the logic, and this is, of course, you know, partially Rick, is Rick has, has been really kind of focused on VWAP, the volume weighted average price. It's this green, this, this yellow line right here. What the VWAP is, is the price where there's equal volume in the trading session from last night till now, above price and below price. So you can kind of see where these bars have tested down to VWAP, never really accepted below it, tried to hold above it, but then finally when it did break through it, it broke through it with some, with some gusto. So that VWAP is a it's, a, it's a popular level. A lot of traders look at it. A lot of traders use it to look for opportunities. So the short was based on the fact that we were looking like we were going to finally accept below VWAP. So we let price come back to it. We get short and we take a profit. Now the profit I did, the profit was to the, to the, to the, to the, uh, uh, gap close. Now I'm looking at it like, you know, it's looking pretty cheap according to the to the late spike. Okay, the base of the late spike is exactly 38.54 quarter. This should be supportive. It's where the market broke out and continued and closed higher on Friday. The late spike indicates prices moving higher, but doesn't have the opportunity to accept it during that session. We opened above it. That's the highest probability of continuation or continued acceptance of higher pricing. So when we get back to it, when we get back to the base of the late spike, it offers opportunity. It offers a chance to limit risk. Okay, what we don't want to happen is for a price to come back in and reaccept inside the body of Friday's profile, the value area. So we could feasibly come all the way back down to the base, to the start of the late spike, which is 38, 39 quarter, right down here. Which could still be along. So we've got A period just about to finish. We're going to open B period with a lot of excess. Which makes me a little nervous. So here's the base of the late spike. We just got down to it. Here it is. Look at our overnight low. It's almost to the start of the late spike. The afternoon pullback, if you will. Bob, there it is. We'll put the link in to get into the Zoom meeting if you'd like. Never gave you a sniff up there, huh, John? Nope. Zach, I don't really scale into trades or out of trades. Um, I... I, I Call it semantics if you want. Um, I don't want to add to losing positions, but I will accumulate a position in a range. Use your eight ball. Yeah, there it is. So there's our low, and it's not a very strong low. We got a poor low here. Gold ETFs, John. I just sold some at the 200 MA. It's working. Taking some, taking some pesos. Good. So. This poor low, 
right now it's looking like we just got too damn short down there. It's just below the base of the late spike here. We tried to put in a bid, tried to, to, to squeak into a long down here unsuccessfully. Trading research, you were absolutely right. Buy it. I was thinking the same thing, man. I was. When you lobs drop, John, you might want to drop your soul order. I was going to uh, wait for a wait for a vote, and I stuck a bid in, and it just never got to us. Your sell order at seventy five. You should move down to seventy three now. The link for the calendar to Humble. What's the link to the calendar? Which calendar are we looking at? <laughs> hey, Reggie. Oh, uh, I don't know if there's necessarily a calendar. But if you go to our YouTube page, you'll see this right at the top. <gasps> this picture scared me. Right? So there's forecast, make hope money. Look like the thinker. <laughs> they didn't take pictures of me looking happy on the trading floor. <laughs> they took pictures of you in the bathroom. <laughs> Mortimer. Was that counter auction the overnight inventory? It's a great question. So, you know, everybody was, ta I saw people commenting, the market opened with a big gap and then it crumbled back into the range from, from Friday. So the market opened here, got too short here, got too long, got back to even here. I don't think that this was necessarily inventory i think this is just traders thinking they're they're getting a getting a uh, an expensive short and i think we're i think we're too short now i think over inventory is too short in the day time frame i think it's going to bounce between 3820 and 3900 that's the that's going to be a range until it takes one or the other out all right, Mr. Valentine has set the price. Yeah, the uh, Shaw is pointing out that the volume point of control has flipped to the bottom quarter of this profile. The TPO profile as well, but it's very early in the session. So both both TPOs, both points of control are indicating seller control right now. Do we look at the regular trading hour low as an opportunity for a long? You can try it. I mean, I could see it coming all the way down to 38, 39. You know, psychologically, that 38, 50, is, you know, those even numbers like that, psychologically. Big, fat, round numbers. A lot of traders play those. Yeah, Spence is looking at, he's looking at the long here, but not falling in love with it. But if it does get up to VWAP, then if you get long and then it gets to VWAP, I'd flip.
certainly is just kind of festering. 38.45 is the volume point of control from yesterday. 38.42 is the TPO point of control. It's the dead center of, I say yesterday, I mean Friday, I'm sorry. Look at the daily though on the left. Well, this is, here's the daily. Should have, yeah, some 38, right around 38.20 and go across. Oh, here's the, the 30. There. And then 3,800. Yep, and a lot of folks focusing on that, right? Yeah. JT talking about 3,842 to 39 for a long. It's kind of our overnight low there, right? 38.42. Okay, we just revisited our low here. We we're unable to take it out. You, you, you bailed on the bid? Well, I just got in, but worse trade location. <laughs> I say that in every one of my trades. Right? It's always wrong. So make your offer up there at two lot. We'll see what happens. I've been talking about it's too short, it's too short. Now we put our money where our mouth is. You jinxed yourself. Yeah, probably. The, the market loves to make a liar out of me. You notice that? It does. No, I don't know. And it's always wrong. Huh. Well, it's right when it agrees with me. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, Spencer, that's what these guys got two, two up there at so Yeah, I'm not liking this. And then get short, take his profit and get short. I'm not liking this, so I'm trimming the risk. It was. I just got bad trade location there. I'm not comfortable with it, so. Probably just shot myself in the foot, but eh, it's all right. Won't be the first or the last time. And no, I didn't. All right, now. Yes, I was thinking the same thing, Michael. But I got to stay patient. I want to make sure that that excess has a chance to kind of prove itself. And again, that might cost me in trade location, but I don't have to take poor trade location. I can pass. See, that would have just taken me out. That's what I was worried about. You know, you're talking about... Uh, 
Who was it that was talking about risk management? Greg. When I had that, that long here in poor trade location, it, I'm just think, sitting here thinking, okay, I'm not the only sucker <laughs> that's sitting there. And I know where I had my stop. I knew there were going to be a lot of other stops there. And I think that's what we just took out when we extended this low. So it would have been much better for me to be patient, let the other suckers with their stops down below that to look for that as an entry for the trade. And buy, buy against it? Buy there, when, when everybody else gets stopped out. Now, by everybody else, I'm talking about very short time frame traders like us, pea shooters. Well, yeah, but I mean, looking at the context, we still. A whole lot of reason for it. I still think that there's that you know the fact that we opened above the late spike indicates the market is attempting to to accept higher pricing. It hasn't put in its low here yet, but I think it's still. You know, you until we get until we get some acceptance inside value from yesterday. There it is. So we're still going. That's why I'm waiting. Look at the overnight low. Weak. Told you to just sell it and forget it. Well, how short are you, Randolph? <laughs> well, I've been long the SH ETF, which is short. Like short, right. real comfortable with it, but that's the side I want to play right now. <clears throat> hey, there's where the risk is, folks. Here's where the risk is. Reaccepting value from Friday. So... your next play, John? Well, we're going to chill here for a little bit. Still looking to buy it? Yeah, I mean, look at look at where we are. I mean, value is higher. Right now, overlapping higher, but still higher. And the nuances that we were looking at this morning are still valid. It's going to take a lot to bring value back to even with, the, with Friday. Right here. So I'm I'm still being patient, looking for the right opportunity to to see this market move higher. But boy, it's sure sure struggling. I think it's what's the delta look like? Hang on a second here. All three. Negative sixty six hundred. Yeah. The Dow. Yeah, they're, the they're all red. Mm -hmm. So the delta is telling me that the here. Look at the e mini S and P's sixty four hundred negative. That's congruent with direction. Kind of telling me that it's probably shorter time frame traders selling into this market, looking for it to roll over and head lower. Look at that spike in volume. 
Oh yeah, that's the eight, eight o'clock, eight thirty bar. Mm-hmm. That's the open. New shorts. Yeah, that's new short time frame shorts. Yeah, uh, James is kind of pointing out a weak overnight low right here, sitting right next to a naked point of control. I mean, this area, this looks like a kind of a high target area here. Right here. Where's the overnight low? Right here. You got an order in there now? I don't yet. Sell up there at Yep. Okay. Which is basically half back now, too. About halfway. Mm hmm. Tells you that 3875, there were a lot of players right there looking at your profile. The volume? Yeah. Yeah. Not looking at not looking at buying it yet. 3820, here we come. be surprised but here's our overnight low anything can happen right yeah caesar a little bird telling me we are going down to 3820 T tpo point of control just hit from friday An IB. Initial balance. Oh. First hour of trade. Thought he might be um all right. Start of the late spike, thirty eight thirty nine quarter, right here. We are certainly showing um, no signs of rejection of value from me from Friday. We may finish this value area special situation before the end of the period. We're long at 40 right now. Are you going long? Yep. Might, might not be a bad scalp here. Mortimer. <laughs> All right, Randolph. I think you owe me a dollar, don't you? Uh, what was the bet again? I don't even remember. Uh, 
now we're back inside the overnight range. More coffee. We're going to get out. We're going to take a profit. Well, I don't know yet. All I know is the risk. Nice even number, 3850. 3900. Yeah. 4000. Or VWAP. <laughs> well, I'm just going to let this play out as it is and get out at VWAP if if it does. It's going to be a range day, John. You probably pick a good spot. Quite possibly. So we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm risking basically three points. Yeah, you're a big spender. Yeah, I know. I, I love a cheap trade. Love a cheap trade. And we'll see what happens. I'll let you know on the uh, on the uh, market reflection at 3 o'clock how, how things played out. But I got to get running today. Yeah. So All right. Thanks, love you, brother. Love you too. Thank you for coming. Thanks for your help, Rick. Very well, everybody. Thanks for all your help, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you at the end of the day. Yeah. Make some money, guys. Have a great session, everyone.